Hello, I'm going to talk about poetry, this on my poetry channel for my own poems. I just thought I would make a video about what I think about poetry, what it is, what's it for, what's a good poem, what's a bad poem, um, and stuff. I mean, I'm only a poet of about four years. I've been writing poems. Had a, a previous life as a scientist, and uh, that's finished now. So, yeah, here we go. It may be of interest, and I hope it is, and I hope it makes people want to read poetry, and of course, my poetry as well. Okay, so, this is part one. What makes a poem a poem, and what's a good poem? So, I hope you get something out of this video, which will probably include being entertained, maybe the inspiration to even write some poems as well. So... I'll start. My brother has been saying for some time that my poems are not poems. And his point is that they don't have rhymes and they're not funny. Not always funny, anyway. And he's right about the content, but is he right about what defines a poem? I mean, what do you think? Poetry's been around forever. I mean, since antiquity, since people first uh, were prepared to talk to each other rather than just stabbing each other with spears. So I wrote, actually wrote a poem recently which did have rhymes in it and that was called On Not Living Forever and uh, that poem is on this same channel. And my brother saw it and he came out and said, I like this one. Honestly, I felt like I'd won an award. So. What is a poem? And why would you read or listen to one? So I'm only giving you my opinions. I'm not saying this is right or wrong or right, even right for you. A while ago, I read a book that's highly recommended for people who want to write poetry. It's published by Blood Axe Books. And it's about how to write poems. And one of the chapter con chapters contains the rules. I'll come back to that, but he, who even knew that there were rules? Okay, I also want to say something about what I think poems are for in our modern world. Because um, maybe the majority of people couldn't give a damn about poetry. It might as well not exist as far as they're concerned. Is, is it useful? Is it as important as, you know, food and drink, somewhere to live, um, entertainment? Where is it? in the hierarchy of needs in our lives. So what poems are for is probably different. For the poet, what the poems are for is one thing. What poems are for for just a reader of poetry, a member of the general public, is probably quite another. So what makes a poem a poem? Well, it's a bunch of words written down or recorded or remembered or in, in some way repeatable. And it's different than prose. Prose is just a bunch of words written down. Uh, a remark, a letter, an essay, a story, or even a book. That's prose. Poetry is something a bit different. And it's something that expresses an idea, or a set of ideas, or tells a story. And it should leave the, the reader, or listener, in the case of YouTube poetry, Affected in some way, you know, cheered up, moved, comforted, enlightened, curious, angry even, sad even. And I don't think they should take longer to read than it would take for a cup of coffee to go cold. So I, I've written down what I think the sort of poems there are in, in the English speaking word these days. I think there are about six kinds and the first kind of the classics which tend to get pushed at us in school, some of us. And examples of that would be Ozymandias, Cargoes by John Macefield, Wordsworth's Daffodils, Coleridge's Xanadu and the Ancient Mariner, Proud Cortez, uh, Sir Patrick Spens, Once More Into the Breach, Dear Friends, Once More, and Gray's Elegy in a Country Churchyard. I actually like most of those. Then the second kind would be the famous, famous poems, funny or life-affirming or poignant ones, the ones that people know and they point out to you or even recite to you at a, par a party or something. Um, like, they fuck you up, your mum and dad, by um, 
I've forgotten his name, a um, famous poet who was the librarian at Hull University. The road not taken, stop all the clocks, that was in four weddings and a funeral. Do not stand at my grave and weep, written, um, that was once thought anonymously, but they now know who wrote that. We Sleek It Cowering Timorous Beastie by Robert Burns and Dolce et Decorum Est, one of the First World War poems that contains the lines, Gas Boys, Gas. And then the third sort of poem that, that we might come across these days are what I'd call the absolute gems that, that you and I discover now and then. And, and often we don't know why we like them, why we're so struck by them, like... Poem, on, in, poem in October by Dylan Thomas. It was my 30th year to heaven. That one. <coughs> the Wits and Weddings, The Coming of the Magi, The Thought Fox by Ted Hughes. Green, I Want You Green, that's a Spanish poem by Lorca, but well known in translation. Howl, Stopping by the Woods One Snowy Evening, and um, E.E. E. Cummings' is In Just Spring. And for me, mostly, these came by buying poetry books, poetry collections. And then another sort I would call the monsters, big beasts of poet, poems. Um, usually la long and also really significant for change in the way poetry was thought of in their day. So examples would be The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Under Milk Wood by Dylan Thomas, which could also be said to be a play. Goblin Market by Rossetti. I'll be making another, another video later specifically about these, what I call, monsters. And then we have rap. Rap, rhythm and poetry, a massive open door to poetry for, for a lot of people, uh, mostly younger than me. And big names there are Tupac Shakur, Biggie Smalls, or the notorious big... And Eminem, of course. And then, finally, I would say political poems. Political, that appear at political events as performances, uh, and live performances in general, often seen on mainstream media. And here I'm thinking about Kate Tempest, a current poet. Lem Sisse. Roger McGough and the Liverpool Ranters, who had their day in the uh, 80s, 90s. Um... And the, the dub poet from a bit earlier, Linton Quasi Johnson. So, the, this is not exactly telling you what's a poem and what's a good poem, but I'm trying to um, give examples of types of poems which, if you pick out for yourself, and they're easy to find on the net, you'll soon see what appeals to you and what doesn't. And this might be the best definition of a good poem, one that you like. If you buy one of these big tomes of collected verses going back any number of years, I think you'll get an overall impression of death, sorrow, lost love, suffering and mawkish yearning, and often full of archaic words, long archaic words and phrases. I'm sure this is enough to put a lot of people completely off poems. Imagine getting bought one of those when you're a child. But cheer up, the future's here. So, back to what I referred to earlier as the rules. Some poets, a lot of poets, and certainly some critics and poetry competition judges, will actually reject poems as poems if they don't fall to some extent within the rules. And the rules say that there are only a certain number of forms that a poem should take. And these forms actually date back to medieval times and beyond, you know, to the Greek and Roman classics. And the forms are a kind of templates based on the number of lines, the, the metre, the rhythm, the beats, the number of feet, which I believe are called iambs or dactyls in certain lines, and sometimes on the pattern of long and short syllables or even of stresses on words. And how each, re how each line relates to the ones before it and after it. And the rhyming schemes, that's a really important in, in defining uh, these 
these given forms for poetry, what rhymes with what, and whether they're internal lines or external external rhymes. So do they occur even in one sentence, or are they three or four lines later? This sort of thing. And it leaves us with a set of templates, referred to in, in the game, as forms, with their own fancy names, titles. And if you want a real flying chance of winning a poetry prize, it might be best to write your poem, however modern, in one of these archaic forms. So there, there's, here's a list of their names, just for interest. Sonnets, redoubles, villanelles, sestinas, elegies, tetsarima, pantoums, rondos, and if you really must, limericks, or God save us, haikus. And I'm being rude about haikus, but actually I think there's one really good haiku by John Cooper Clarke, the punk poet, and it goes something like, Getting everything in 17 syllables is very difficult. So, there are these given forms, and some of these forms go in and out of fashion. You know, good grief, darling, you've written a sonnet in 2020? So be warned. Because the critics, if they get to your work, may deconstruct your blockbuster with a mathematical precision and check that you haven't miscounted your iams or dactyls. Honestly, if you can be bothered, it could actually be fun to build a poem with a recognisable classical form, which also says exactly what you want to say and movingly in the way you want it to be. But for me, life is actually rather short. And also, I should say, I haven't mentioned prose poems, slam poetry or flash fiction, but I might in a later video. That's enough for now, I think. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it inspires you in some way, even this little taster that I've given you here. And I hope it leaves you curious at least to look at a few of my poems that I've put on this channel. So watch this space for more videos, which will pick up some of the threads of things I've just touched on here. And watch out for more new poems. Thanks again. Goodbye for now.